address, just announcing the players on court. I can tell you that it is Mizuki Fuji and Reika Kakiwa. Japan world ranking of number four at the moment. They're up against Eva Lee and Paula Obanyana. So I'm absolutely delighted to welcome into the commentary box for the first time former Danish head coach, Steen Peterson. And Steen, of course, you led Denmark to two Thomas Cup finals and uh, vastly experienced coach. And I know that you've been sitting down as we welcome the players onto court, watching those first two singles. And whilst the Americans beaten in two straight games, good fighting spirit seen by them, certainly in the opening games and, and all goes well for the future. Yeah. Especially uh, the first lady singles, uh, Rina Wayne was of course uh, playing well in, in, in both games. Uh, there's some signs that perhaps there's a little bit of a side drift in the hole, and, and players should uh, should get used to it. And um, I think that uh, Hirose she uh, totally took control here in the second game. So yeah, she's a vastly experienced player, as we were saying earlier, a finalist at the All England Championships last year, 2011. So the toss of the coin from Ian Spear, our umpire. And the service judge will be Mr. Mugliana from Indonesia. So the Japanese pair, first of all, there, Reika Kakiwa, 22 years of age, from Kumamoto in Japan. She and her partner, Mizuki Fuji, also in her early 20s, 23, though a year older. But they've been playing together since they were juniors, so this is their fourth full year on tour. But vastly experience within the partnership. And as far as the Japanese pair are concerned, not only did their teammate Iriko Hiroshi reach the final of the All England Championships last year, so did they. Wonderful tournament for them because they were unseeded, lost in the final to Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang, who of course are now the world champions. So their win-loss record for the year. They're currently ranked at four in the world. Seven individual tournaments this year, and as you can see, very healthy win-loss record, and that translates into two semi-finals and two quarter-finals. But interestingly, they've never actually lived up to their seeding position in their tournaments this year, apart from one occasion. So underperformed as far as their status in world ranking is concerned. So Obanyana, 27 years of age, born in the Philippines. And she and her partner, well, you can see their win-loss record for the year, <laughs> a lot more healthy than their Japanese opponents. But it should be mentioned, of course, that they have been playing some of the lower grade tournaments. There's Eva Lee, 25 years of age. From born in Hong Kong, been living in California now for some considerable time. World ranking of 30. But already this year, four finals for the American pair, winning recently in Tahiti. Runners up in Sweden, Austria, and Poland as well. But, Steve, you have to say that. Uh, Mizuki Fuji and Oreka Kakiwa, as we look at our umpire, Ian Spear, he'll be calling the players to order in just a moment. Japanese pair really are vastly experienced, aren't they, in world team uh, terms? And, you know, four titles, but four big titles to their names. Yes, exactly. And uh, the Japanese are also uh, very experienced in playing in, in big stadiums like the one we're sitting in here in, in Wuhan. Whereas uh, the American pair has played mostly uh, IC tournaments, uh, probably uh, trying to qualify for the Olympics uh, through the Pan American spot. Um, I've seen them in, in uh, a number of uh, IC tournaments. IC tournaments, of course, international challenger events. 
and to the Americans failed to qualify for the Olympic Games. The uh, continental representatives from uh, Pan America will be the Canadian pair. Uh, Michelle Lee and her partner Bruce. So this the first women's doubles match number three in the overall tie. And with Japan leading two love so far after the first two singles, this uh, a tall order for Eva Lee and Paula Obenyana. a lovely drop shot from Mizuki Fuji. What do you what do you say as a coach, Steam, when you've got uh, if you put yourself in the American shoes here and, and you've got a pair here? They've already seen their teammates go down to the Japanese in the first two singles. Uh, clearly underdogs in this women's doubles. What do you say to them? Go out there, enjoy it, or do you give them specific tactics, or what would you say? A, a little bit of both. I mean. Uh, it's a big thing for, for the United States to qualify in the Uber Cup, so of course they have to they have to enjoy the match. They're, they're going to play two matches here, uh, one against Japan today and tomorrow against Denmark, and, uh, and then they're probably going to go home again. So they, they definitely have to enjoy it, but also set some specific tactics goals uh, that they should try to achieve during the match. So we use the matches. It's, uh, Development. So, w if you were advising them tactically, what specifics would you give against it? Because I know that you know the Japanese pair exceedingly well, but perhaps don't know this American pair as well. But given your knowledge of badminton, what do you see are perhaps weaknesses in the Japanese pair that could be exploited by another pair? Yeah, well, one of the possibilities is what we see now that the background player is uh, working a lot, whereas the, the front court player isn't really participating. So, so if they could move the background player around uh, from side to side, they might get some counter-attacking opportunities. Um, and then it's, I also think it's very important that, that they don't uh, defer too much from their own style of play. Sometimes when you meet an opponent whom you're known to be uh, a bit better than yourself, you try too much and you give away a lot of easy points instead of just playing your own game and sort of uh, see what's happening. A uh, good interception at the net from Reka Kikiwa. And I always think in general terms though, Steen, you know, I watch these top Japanese pair. What have they got? Four in the top ten or something in the world at the moment. I mean, it's extraordinary strength in depth. But to me, given the point that you just made, emphasizes that I've something that I've be believed for such a long time. They're such good workers on court, but they never really build the rally for it to be finished off at the net by the net player. The net player isn't hunting the shuttle enough. Uh, it's, it seems that. Um they don't have the really strong attacking weapons like, for instance, the Chinese, who is, of course, the best in the world. Um, so they rely a lot on their defense, extremely strong defense, and uh, extremely solid. Uh, they can play on for hours and hours. And yeah. And, uh, that sometimes makes it a little bit boring if you don't understand it well. But, uh, but they're, they're sort of carrying out the strategy to perfection. But uh, don't you think they could add a dimension to that? Look look at that. That was nice to see. Reika Kiki were actually going for it at the net. Instead of just the lifting and playing the solid defensive game. 
there it was again. Yeah, I love it. I love watching play like that. That, to me, is something that they can really develop as a Japanese pair and start to challenge the top Chinese pairs. Exactly. And, and that's sort of the development in ladies' doubles. I, I think that's the next step, that you have to have both players participating in killing the shuttle. Yeah, nice play from the Americans, too. channel attack, the attack down the center of the court in between her two opponents, that's when she got the advantage. For people that don't understand the tactics or the intricacies of, of badminton, it, it looks hitting down the center of the court is a nothing shot, doesn't it? But actually in doubles, it's, it's one of the most effective tactical plays there is. Down the center there, you narrow the angle of reply, confuses your two opponents who's supposed to take it yeah exactly the confusion is very important because you want to take away a little bit of time for the opponent so if they lose a little bit of time they lose control and you might be able to exploit that so five point advantage now for Fuji and Kokiwa from Mizuki Fuji. Quite unsatisfied with the home performance there. It was uh, the same in the first rally of the, the game. It seems that she's a little bit nervous. Even though it sounds strange playing the Americans. Nervous because of the fact that Japan are the number two seeds here in the Uber Cup, or, or nervous perhaps because they don't really know their opponent's style? Yeah, probably uh, they're a little bit uncertain on what to expect from the Americans. And, uh, I'm not sure, of course, that she's nervous, but, but if she is, it might also be due to the fact that Japan has to select between their women's doubles pairs regarding Olympic qualification, so good performance will be nice here. Fuji and Kukiwa are the highest of the three Japanese pairs in the top eight in the world. And according to Olympic qualifying rules, only two in the top eight can qualify for the Games. And so perhaps the pressure of that playing on their minds. Well, Coach Rule is very animated when he speaks to his players. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen you animated like that, Steen. You're always very calm with your players and always involve them in discussions. I think there's a very distinctive difference between the coaching style of, of us Europeans. You always ask your players questions, whereas the Asian coaches tend to tell them what they want. Is that a fair comment? Uh, yeah, in general, I think it's a fair comment. Um, I can be animated if, if I feel there's a need for that. But, um, normally, I think the players need a, a, a more calm advice from outside. 11, six, five. So with the five point advantage, play resumes here in the opening game of this first women's doubles.
delightful. That's your point exactly, isn't it? The hesitation between the two Japanese players, neither went for it. And, and it's, it's really uh, excellent play by the Americans here because uh, they sort of take the initiative in, in the rally. So it's nice to see them get rewarded for it. Yeah, and again. Well, I don't know what coach advised them, but whatever it was, it seems right. Had the desired effect. Oh, fabulous shot. The racket head control just to brush the shuttle off the top of the tape. Guide it into that mid-court area. Perfect for doubles. It gets it past the net player, but the shuttle lands in front of the rear court player. Ideal tactics. get themselves on the attack they've got to keep their patience haven't they yeah and that's probably going to be one of the keys uh, i think in the long run they might not be able to keep the patience because i think the japanese girls are in, in quite a bit better shape than the americans but well, that's, yeah that's the way to to do it to keep the patience and, and look for opportunities remember one famous match at your Denmark Open a few years ago with this Japanese pair. They played over and out by the mid-game interval in game number two against fellow Japanese opponents. Do you remember that? One of the players collapsed after an hour and 41 minutes. They haven't finished the third game. So I don't think there's any doubt in their fitness levels. Oh, that's nicely taken. Shuttle bouncing off the top of the tape for which she apologizes for the good fortune. That's nice to see that they've been attacking the tape uh, because um, I get the feeling in the rallies that the, the front court player doesn't really read the game no. as well as, as you'd like her to. But, um, but in the server situation, they take some chances and that should make the opponents quite unsecure on what's going on. Well done here. Seven straight points and a ten point advantage. And they're beginning to lose belief, I think, the American pair. done and that brings up game points a whole host of them that's gone very quick from 8 11 yeah now 10 straight points from that 11 8 advantage to close it out 21 8 13 minutes of play. The second half of the game, slipping away from the Americans, perhaps just a little too quickly. <laughs> the Japanese coaches go on to talk to their players. Well, there's an indication from Park Jibong. Once more attacking from the net, there is confirmation of game number 21-8. 13 minutes. Of course, Steve, you know, you've said that you like to see that attacking play. 
you can quite clearly see from the stats here that the Japanese pair 12 overhead winners three times as many as the Americans I'm surprised that only one at the net from the Japanese pair but this is what I was trying to explain earlier and, and, and you picked up on it as well saying that they rarely involve their net player and it's good to see them looking for the left a little bit more because you know here they are number four in the world but I think there's a whole department of their game where they can really improve which would leap their standard forward to really really challenge those top Chinese pairs and it is that hunting the shuttle at the net that ability to kill it from the front of the court yeah and, and the desire to sort of create your own points that's really, in my opinion, what separates the Japanese women's doubles from the Chinese. The Chinese are dangerous. They're able to create points themselves. And of course, the Japanese are as well. We see that they're doing it here, but, but against the lower standard of players. So they have to be able to create points against their own standard of play, players uh, in the future. Here we go, game number two. Double play. World number four, rank pair, Mizuki Fuji and Reika Kakiwa. Absolutely galloping through that opening game. 21-8. Oh, that's a great interception from One, Mizuki Fuji. Again, well constructed points. You can see that when the Americans play on, on top of that game, they can uh, they can challenge the Japanese. The problem is that they have to play on top of the game all the time. If they lower the level a little bit, they will lose points very quickly. Yeah. Took the half chance to go forward, did Mizuki Fuji. Why on earth doesn't she do that against the, the Chinese pairs? Yeah, it was really great, and, and it puts, not, not only does it win the, the rally for the Japanese, but it also puts uh, psychological pressure on the Americans, knowing that someone is coming forward. Yeah. I suppose so much of badminton is about the, the threat of what can happen. You know, if, if there's no threat of a player coming forward, then you've got all the time and no pressure on you to play back to the net area. And command of the net in doubles, absolutely paramount. Otherwise, you, you have a lot of chances yourself. If, if the opponent is unable to score against you, you don't need to take the big chances. You can just wait. If the chances is gone, then just play on and wait for the good opportunity. Yeah, good judgment. Let that drop long of the back line. It's a really good feeling to get on the court that the opponent is not able to do any harm to you, so... You should try to avoid them getting that feeling. Six, two. One of five straight points. Oh, 
Oh, superb. Wonderful. Good reach, good anticipation in the right place at the right time. And there's a little hand signal. Just letting her partner know where she's going to serve to. done now we've seen from the last few rallies steve it's all about working the rally for the net player to finish it off yeah uh, I, I think it was um kristen who said it was the uh, indonesian coach you could look at it as a, as a playmaker and a finisher the playmaker is at the back court and the finisher is at the front court My first coach has said to me, the idea of doubles is to make your partner look good because you should be setting it up for your partner to finish off. And if you're both looking good on court, you're both doing your job. Exactly. <laughs> it's really an easy game. Proving our point. Nine, three. I always think as well, Steen, doubles as you know, you talk about the player that sets it up and one of the players is the finisher. I always think as well that the movement off the shuttle for the net player to always threaten and always make your opponents feel that I'm going to take this next shuttle, I'm going to manage to intercept it. It's a bit like the footballer, you know, on, on a football pitch, they make runs off the ball, drag defenders with them, and then, of course, that leaves the space for one of the other attackers to go through. It's very much the same in badminton. The net player has got to be moving off the shuttle, and I think this is something where the Japanese pair, if they want to be winning gold medals at Olympics, can work on. Yeah, I think... Uh Generally, the uh, Japanese are, are not reading the game on the front court as well as uh, Chinese players, uh, Danish players at the moment, uh, perhaps Indonesian players who's got a more uh, sort of playing uh, attitude towards uh, doubles. Uh, definitely being able to, to anticipate a little bit better would be beneficial. So a seven-point advantage at the mid-game interval here in the second. Always a delight to see the Japanese players as they leave the court, turn and make a little bow to the court officials. Oh, the Japanese coach is, can't hear what he's saying, but he's obviously, by his hand gestures there, urging his players to keep moving forward and keep looking for things at the net. Even if we could hear him, Jill would still be in trouble. <laughs> be able to speak a bit of Japanese there, Steen. But we, we saw that the Japanese coaches are quite confident now because uh, Jopon Park, he stayed on his chair. He wasn't there now, so this is going to go their way. Yes, of course. Park Jubon, the head coach of the Japanese team, then. when he's sitting calmly at the back of the court, a very clear indication, as you say. Highly confident now, Japanese players. Yeah, and the body language of the two Five, Americans, I have to say, four. a little bit concerning now. They're not really, they're not really believing that they can turn this match around. And see that yeah, didn't react to that either they like the uh, picture Four. with the football uh, pitch there Jill because say that it's actually the same that you sort of 
try to chase the opportunity and then you have to both players have to recognize when the opportunity is there and you really can go for the kill yeah, and that's the beauty of doubles because you can get yourself out of position because as long as your partner has that understanding that they move to cover the other three quarters of the court while you're just in one tiny section and and that understanding between the two players is a huge part of what makes a good doubles partnership oh, good smash yeah suddenly something a little bit different cross court smash from Eva Lee yeah wasn't expecting it and her partner's ready to intercept the reply well constructed rally too passive in the defense to my taste this I think they're, they're in trouble every time they're in defense three or four strokes in a row so might as well try to turn it around earlier overdone it just to pick up on that point Steve how do you want to see them turn that around if, if they're forced to defend you want to see them drive it back or block it to the nets yeah either way they can uh, if, uh, I want them to come a little bit uh, closer to the net move a little bit forward so they uh, they can take the opportunity uh, it's very difficult if you're standing uh, close to the baseline and making some constructive shots you give the opponent too much time and of course, the further back in court you are, the lower the shot is going to be if exactly. it, somebody has smashed at you, and therefore you have to just lift it. There's very few opportunities. A lot of players tend to, to move too far back because they can sort of save the shots, and it doesn't really matter because they will just lose it uh, three shots later than they normally would. So they might as well challenge themselves come forward to the net and if they're not good enough then they will know that sometimes they they kid themselves that, that they actually have a good defense but they haven't oh glorious shot mizuki fuji doing something positive on defense don't quite agree with the line judge there i thought it was wide well, seeing that again, and I suspect you're right. Of course, the umpire is allowed to overrule a line decision, but he has to do so immediately, and only if he's seen that a clear error has been made. No overrule from Ian Spear on that occasion. Good move there. The pressure on from midcourt and continuing towards the net. Racket arm outstretched to play the first one. Forces the weak reply and the easy kill, as you say. And now just two points from taking the second game and the match. well did the Americans but I couldn't help but think in my own mind exactly what you had just been saying there was too much contentment just to get it back rather than try and do something with it in the end of course the Japanese made the error but it wasn't as if they were forced into that error something that you and I would like to see more of 
there's another simple lift. Well, went for the block, didn't work on that occasion. And now, 11 match point opportunities for Fuji and Kikiwa. First time of asking a very comprehensive performance from the world number fours, Mizuki Fuji and Reka Katiwa, 21-8, 21-9. Just under the half hour mark. But in all honesty, the signs to me that they are trying to play a lot more aggressive in their style. And if they are trying to change their style, playing against the Americans, Eva Lee and Paula Forbenyana, a great place to try that out. As you can see, 30 minutes and 21 8, 21 9 in the margin of victory in the first women's doubles 